Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about Streamlit, which is the easiest way to build and share your data applications on the web. So in this channel so far, I've created a variety of web applications in order to uh, visualize and display charts and share our data um, on the web. However, um, this involves a lot of complexity. Uh, so a lot of times when I'm creating these web applications, I'm creating an API, I'm returning JSON to the browser, um, I'm creating HTML templates or React components and using a JavaScript framework, and I'm fetching data from a server uh, using JavaScript and then displaying it with HTML. And there's a lot of back and forth between a network communication and a front end and back end code. Now, um, if you're just a data scientist or researcher, uh, a lot of times you don't wanna deal with all the complexity of running a web server. And that's where uh, frameworks like Streamlit come into play. And what Streamlit and solutions like Plotly Dash allow you to do is just take your knowledge of Python and use that in order to build a, a full web application. And so I was checking out uh, this stream, Streamlit um, framework, I guess you would say, or call it a library. Um, I was checking this out and I thought it was really intuitive and straightforward and I really liked it. And uh, thanks to Python Engineer, uh, you should check out his channel if you haven't already. I've referenced him a couple of times, but for people that want to know a lot about machine learning, he covers uh, these topics. And he recently made this uh, stock prediction application, which uses Facebook Profit, and it's right here. And that's where I learned a little bit about Streamlit. So he has a pretty good tutorial on that. Um, and so shout out to Python engineer. I was supposed to collaborate with them, but I like had a complete meltdown in December and never got it done. Uh, so yeah, check out this application uh, if you can. So let me give you a quick tour of the Streamlit website and a couple things you can do with it. And I'm gonna show you what we're gonna build in this tutorial. So I have the website open here and you see it says it's very easy to share data apps. And you can see right here, you just write a little bit of Python code and you can essentially just print stuff to a web application. So instead of just doing like a Python print statement that prints to the console, you do like streamlit.write or streamlit.image. And this give you these really simple functions where you can just pass it uh, the location of a URL and I'll just print the image on the page. You can pass it a data frame. It prints a nice table that's dis that displays on the web. And it might remind you a little bit of Jupyter note Notebooks in that way as well. But there's also these cool widgets that you can put in on the side to like interact with your data. So they come, there's little widgets for uh, sliders and drop downs and uh, text input and all of that. So it makes it really easy to like build forms, interact with those forms and have those interactions with the forms uh, manipulate the data that you're in your Python code. And I'll show you how that works in a second. And so all you gotta do is install this uh, with pip. You just install Streamlit and you're ready to go. And if you go through the docs and the components, uh, there's all these cool widgets for charts and, and uh, bar graphs, maps, uh, images, um, all that kind of stuff. And there's cool gallery of like people uh, creating these sliders to uh, manipulate images and do machine learning applications. So really cool applications of this. Okay, and so what we're gonna build today is I went ahead and took this for a test drive and I'm gonna use a sum of the data, both the data that we uh, populated in the Postgres database tutorials. So I have this little pattern uh, recognition thing. Uh, so this little screener, right? So we can just populate some uh, patterns here and when I select this dropdown, you see it pulls up the charts that, of stocks that match that pattern using our price database. And then I have a variety of dashboards here. So you can see how I can switch between dashboards. So I have one uh, that queries Twitter, so popular Twitter traders, and shows uh, the ideas that they are posting and charts. So this is a get, good way to get some simple ideas, some ideas for stocks you might want to trade. So you see there's like Trader Stewie there, um, uh, see the light trading, uh, Ian McMillan, a few people that post charts all the time. It's a good way to just generate ideas. You know, you don't want to really copy people's trades, but it's good to see what other people are talking about. And then I also have this hooked up to Wall Street Bets. And so you can see the number of mentions and I have this cool slider where I can see the number of mentions and I can uh, scroll back number of days, right? And if I do like seven days, you see how this uh, data changes and you can see the different uh, mentions on social media. I also have hooked this up to stock twits. So if you type like NVDA, um, it'll pull up all the chatter and, and on stock twits and pull up a chart. And then also I have a dashboard that's just, you know, pulling up charts. So I want to show you how to build your own little chart widget. And this just uses uh, Plotly uh, graph objects to uh, build a chart and just put it in here. 
and then display a data frame. So I wanna show you how to use just all the different types of widgets and you can put them together in a way that's useful for you. So I'll show you how very simple it is to just uh, get a data frame and then output a chart like this, an interactive chart, output a pandas data frame to the web and have this dynamically uh, load different dashboards depending on uh, what options are selected on the left side here. So it's really easy to just place all these different widgets and have those all interact, uh, query our database, uh, query social media, and, uh, and visualize that data on the web. And so we're just gonna build uh, one uh, web application that has you know five different dashboards with different options and have it a very interactive web application that displays uh, visual data in a variety of ways. So let's go ahead and get started with the tutorial. All right, as usual, I have an empty Visual Studio Code editor open and I am going to build this from scratch, but I'm also gonna post the source code on github.com slash hacking the markets and I'll link it down below if you want to just follow along that way and not type it all out, but I recommend uh, following along and building this out and you'll learn it a little bit better. All right, so I have a Visual Studio Code editor open. I'm gonna go to open and I usually just create a new project. So I just create a new folder and I'm just gonna call it a Streamlit Dashboard uh, so streamlit dashboard like that and just open that up okay and the first thing we do is uh, install our dependencies so i usually just create a requirements.txt and this has all of the uh, different dependencies that we're going to use so the packages we need are uh, streamlit because that's the main topic of this video i'm going to use pandas for data frames and i'm going to use uh, plotly for the uh, charts and graph the graph objects and I'm gonna use uh, PsychoPG2, and I'm just gonna use that to connect to our Postgres database. And so if you don't have the database, if you didn't follow along with the previous tutorials on Postgres, you won't be able to do the database part of this, but you can substitute in a different data source if you want. So if you just wanna use uh, CSV files to get your price data, you can do it that way. And we've talked about that uh, plenty of times in the past. So um, if you don't want to uh, use the database part, you can also use requests, uh, because we're also gonna do some dashboards that just make requests to Twitter, um, and other APIs. Oh, and I'm also going to use Tweepy or Tweepy, uh, however you say it. And this is a Python package for interacting with Twitter. So I'm also going to talk about uh, Twitter data. So I'm adding that as well. All right. So I will just uh, create a new file. And I'm just going to call it, let's call it dashboard.py. And I'm going to try to do uh, import streamlet. Okay. Um, and I'll run that to make sure I have Streamlit. Yeah, so I have my virtual environment set up already, but uh, you can install all the packages. So I'm gonna do pip3 install dash r requirements text, and it'll just find all those packages and install them. Or you can install all of them manually so you can do a pip install Streamlit, et cetera, et cetera, for all these packages, okay? And then you make sure you get your packages installed and then you can import Streamlit. And then what's cool about Streamlit is you just, once you install it, you have this command called Streamlit and so you just run streamlit run, and then the name of my file is dashboard.py. And just like that, it fires up a web browser and you have a dashboard application. So I already have a server, I already have a web app, but there's nothing on it, I haven't done anything, okay? So what do we have? Uh, so I'm gonna import streamlit as st. Uh, a lot of times people just wanna shorten this and use st by convention. And so let's see if I call some of these functions. So uh, we have these very simple uh, commands to display text. So you can display text by typing dot text. Uh, we have dot markdown if we want to display markdown. Uh, we have latex for these uh, math uh, functions. LaTeX, do you say LaTeX? LaTeX. Um, there's streamlet dot write um, and there's streamlet dot title for a title uh, and a header. Okay, so I can do title and I'll say this is the title. Okay, and I'll do st.header. This is a header. And I'll do uh, st.write. This is regular text. Okay, and if I do that, and then I go back to my dashboard, I just say rerun. And you see just like that, uh, my web application already has a header. It has a title, or it has a title, a header, and regular text. And I think there's even a subheader. So subheader, subheader, okay. And I can say always rerun. Okay, so you see we have different headings. And the, under the hood, this is just generating HTML and probably JavaScript, right? And so this is very handy, right? See how it's doing all this? You have this nice uh, minified JavaScript file and these uh, 
JavaScript files and CSS files. So it kind of looks, as we build this out, you'll see it looks pretty attractive by default. And that's very nice. One downside is that if you really want a very custom uh, user experience and very fancy interactions, you're not gonna get away with just using these simple functions. So you're gonna get the most sophisticated user experience uh, if you use pure JavaScript and React components, but this will get you like 90% of the way there, okay? So this covers a lot of common use cases. So that's just displaying a simple text. And what's also kind of cool is you can, has these magic, this magic ability, they call it magic commands, where I can uh, write markdown just like this. So I can do header, uh, subheader like that. And if I do that, you see that? It, I had it always rerun and you see it actually read that markdown in line. And if I just defined a dictionary in, in place, so if I do uh, key value and then key two value two, do that, you see that it automatically pretty prints the contents of the dictionary just like that. Uh, and I'm not even assigning it into a variable. So it, it has this ability to like rerun this script. So it's just like writing a script, but it has the ability to like display data in line. So if I just define a data structure there, it just dumps it to the screen. So it makes it really uh, super quick, okay? And so if I have just uh, some dictionary equals key value, and I do uh, st dot write some dictionary, I do that, and you see it does the same thing, right? Uh, so you can just use this st write command to just print any data structure. And so if I say uh, some list equals uh, one, two, three, three, and I just do st.write uh, some list. You'll see I have a list there. So that's a list and that's a dictionary. It's cool. So out of the gate, you see how you can just print stuff to the screen and that works pretty well. Okay. And so the other thing you can do is create a, a sidebar. So I can cre create a sidebar. So I'll do st.sidebar. Okay. And I'll do st.sidebar.write, write this to the sidebar, okay? So if, if you don't uh, put sidebar, it'll just write it to the main content page. But if you do dot sidebar and whatever command, it'll run that in the sidebar. So you see now I have a sidebar, so that's pretty cool too. So you can see I already have a web application with some main content where I can print to it really easily. And I have a sidebar where I can place some widgets. So you can see I already have a very simple web page and just I can print data to the screen. I didn't need to worry about the server. I didn't need to worry about the CSS. It already, you know, looks pretty clean uh, and very easy to use. Okay, so I have this sidebar here and let's go ahead and put a widget, right? So we have all these different uh, widgets. So it has, says display text, display data. And so if you want to display a data frame and just one more final example here. Uh, so we'll do this. So I'll do df, df equals pd.dataframe, and this is just generating a random data frame, and then we'll put re real data in here shortly. And so if I do a streamlet dot data frame, wait, streamlet dot data frame df. So I'll do uh, st dot data frame df. Okay. If I do that, you'll see my dashboard it says pd is not defined. So I'm gonna import pandas. So import pandas as PD, okay? And so all I'm doing here is generating this random data frame and I'm telling Streamlit to uh, display a data frame instead, okay? So uh, numpy is, np is not defined. And so they're using numpy as well. So I'll do, I'll just use that as well. So import numpy as np and I'll add that requirement as well. So install numpy if you don't have it already. If you're on this channel, you already have numpy. Uh, so that's it. And you see that we generated a random data frame and you see it. I don't, I didn't need to write a for loop to like loop through all the columns and rows and display this in a nice way. It's already there. And then, you know, there's this thing to like expand it out so I can see my whole data frame. So it's handling a lot of this display logic for me. So what if you want to display an image? Well, there's st.image and then you see how these are very easy, right? Image data frame. And so image, you can pass it the path to an image and open an image on your local file system, or you can give it a URL and it automatically knows what to do. So if I have Apple stock chart, I type that in and I have this image here. Let me see if I can get a direct address. See, I have an image address right there on nasdaq.com. If I plug that right in to st.image and I go back to my dashboard, you see now the image is in there. 
And so you, you see how we can we have all these building blocks already. And now I'll, all I really have to do is write the code to display these widgets and then access my database and access Twitter and all these data sources and just use all of these function calls to display my data however I want. So in the demo, you'll remember that we had this little drop down on the left side. So if you look at the API reference, you see there are interactive widgets. And so we can call button to create a button, we call checkbox, radio, uh, select box, and so forth. And so you see I have select box here. And so to put a select box on the page, I can do st.selectbox, okay? And then let's see the parameters. Let's, let's just copy their example, okay? Option equals st.selectbox, and we'll say uh, which dashboard, okay? And then we just pass it this tuple here. So we pass it, uh, we give it a tuple with all of the options. So we had a number of dashboards we wanted to make. Uh, so in this tuple, we'll put uh, the Twitter dashboard and we'll put the uh, Wall Street Bets dashboard. And I'll just use lowercase uh, Twitter dashboard, Wall Street Bets dashboard. We have a, a chart dashboard and we have a pattern dashboard. And then we have, what else did I put? Stock twits. Okay, so we have a variety of different dashboard examples we have. And yeah, let's look at it. I have it always refreshing. So that's with, re, uh, there's an always rerun or you can just manually rerun. And you'll see at the bottom, and now there's a, a little drop down just like that. We have a drop down right there on our web page. We didn't have to write a select tag, option tag, anything like that. Okay, so you see that's in the main content. So to put it on the sidebar, Instead of doing st.selectbox, we do st.sidebar.selectbox, and it refreshes, and now we have a which dashboard right there. Okay, so instead of uh, write this to the dashboard, write this to the sidebar here, I'm just going to say options. Okay, so we have a heading, and instead of just write, I'll do a uh, title. Let's see. Yeah, so that looks pretty good. These are options, which dashboard, right? And so you can select these different uh, options. So how do you make the page do something depending on what's selected, right? We want a different dashboard display depending on which one I chose. And so there's a, some magic here where I can just say if option equals equals some value. So let's say uh, Twitter, I can do st dot, uh, actually before I do that, I'm just gonna do st dot uh, header option. Okay, and I'm gonna comment some of this other stuff out for now. Okay, so I'll comment that. Let's comment all of that out. Okay, so all that's here now is the sidebar and st.header option. And look at that. So I have pattern, Wall Street bets, stock twits, chart, and pattern. And it's, it's kind of magical, right? So you see how this document is automatically reacting to uh, what I select here. So every time I change it, option has a different value. And then this option, I can just use it in the header right there. So it kind of almost reminds you, even though it's in Python, kind of reminds you of a React component where there's a state for this particular component. And depending on that state, uh, you can do something else on the web page. So I can change that. And then this st.header call automatically displays uh, the option I have selected. So that's pretty cool. And so now you can see how I could do um, if option equal equal um, Twitter. I could do one thing. So I could do st.subheader Twitter dashboard. Twitter dashboard logic. And I can do if option equal equal uh, chart st.subheader. This is the chart dashboard. Okay. So that's the chart dashboard. That's the Twitter dashboard logic. Okay. So you see how I'm switching between those and having this conditional logic that can, so we have the sidebar component and that controls what happens on the right side. So yeah, that's, that's really cool how that works. Like this, this saves like a ton of time, the ability to change that and just have a simple Python conditional that writes uh, content to the appropriate part of the page and makes it look nice without uh, any additional logic. Uh, so the first one I'll do here, I'm going to do, 
we can technically separate all these out and put each dashboard into a separate file. I'm just going to do this all in one file, and it'll be like a little over 100 lines of code. And so the first one I'll do here is uh, stock twits. And so I'll do st.subheader uh, stock twits. Let's see. Subheader is not defined, so it's st.subheader. Okay. So you see I have a subheader here, and I don't need that subheader. And so let's look up the uh, stock twits API, and I can go here, and then we can look at the different API methods. And then there's one for streams, and so I can get the stream for a particular symbol. And so the way this works is I can just do a web request to this apple.json here. And since I have a request, I can do r equals request.get. Okay, and did I import? I'll import requests. And all this is is a web request to stock twits. And if I send them the URL in apple.json, it'll return me all of the most recent mentions of Apple stock. And so r.json will have that. So uh, data equals r.json, and then let's do st.write data. Okay, so I'm making, if they select stock twits, uh, I'm gonna request apple json uh, from stock twits. I'm going to get the response as json, and I'm gonna write it to the web page. So let's check it out. So I have my dashboard, and you can see, yeah, it's already done. I, I didn't need to do anything. It automatically reloads, okay. So I have it always rerun, and so I'm gonna to go to stock twits. Okay, you see I made the web request, we got a response, we got the symbol for Apple, and now we have all the messages for Apple stock, or at least the most recent ones, right? So we have this nice dictionary response already ready to go. And so let's just loop through all these messages, right? So messages is just a list, so we'll have data, and then we'll have quote messages, and we'll loop through these, okay? So I'll do uh, four, for message in data messages, uh, let's just write out the message instead of all of the data. Let's do it that way, okay? So it's gonna refresh, and then you see now we're just looping through the messages, so this is what a stock twits message look like. And you see, since we didn't print this to the console, when we printed it to the console in the past, it's kinda of hard to read and we gotta like prettify it to read it, but this, I can just see everything going on. So I can just write the body so I'll just do st.write message body. Um, and then what else do we have? Created at will be nice. So message created at. Okay. And then we have the user. So let's do the user and the username. So we'll do uh, st.write message user username. So it's nested in the user and the username. And then we have the user's avatar. So we can do uh, st.write message user and then what is it? Avatar URL. So avatar URL. Oh yeah, and we don't want to do write, we'll do image. Okay, so it'll write the image. So we have a web uh, URL for the image. And just like that, you see how easy that was? We have a stock twits dashboard. Uh, we have Apple stock, and so we have the mentions. We see Glizzy Waters mentioning it at a certain time, and we have that person's uh, avatar. And we have that image on the page. We didn't write any image tags or anything. Okay, so I'm gonna reorder this a bit. So I'm gonna put the user on top, uh, then the username, and then create it at, and then the body. Okay, so that's pretty good. Just like that, I like it. Um, and then so Apple, right? We don't wanna do Apple stock every time, right? I don't wanna hard code this as apple.json. And so what I wanna do is have another option here. So when you select stock twits, we wanna display uh, options that are specific to the stock twits dashboard. And so let's let them type in an input here. And so what I'm gonna do here is I will get rid of that pass. And then on the sidebar, so if the option is stock twits, I'm gonna do st.sidebar.text uh, input. So we have a uh, text input. So I'm gonna look at the documentation. Yeah, so we have text input. So I'm gonna copy that, okay. So we have st.sidebar.textInput. And let's see what it expects. We want a label. So I'm gonna call it uh, symbol, right? We want the label for the text input to be symbol. The default value, so we'll put apple as the default value. Uh, we don't need a max char. Well, we can do max chars of five. Um, and that's, I think that's all we need. OK. 
Okay, so you can type a symbol in and then we'll make this string be dynamic. So I'm gonna make this into an F string and then this instead of apple here, I will do a symbol. So I'm gonna assign this to a variable. So I'll say symbol equals sb.start, st.sidebar.text input and then whatever symbol they type in, it's gonna get assigned a symbol and then this web request will be dynamic depending on what they type into the text box. Okay, so if I refresh this, you see that the symbol is Apple, but I can see what people are saying about NVIDIA. I can see what they're saying about Microsoft, Twitter, and so forth. So we already have a dynamic way to look at stock twits. And you can, obviously this is not a very complex example. You could go to stocktwits.com and type a lot of this in, but you can do more and more complex things like add filters and uh, query this API a number of ways. So there's cool stuff you can do here like, uh, trending, um, watch lists, you can search on particular users, uh, you can look at Forex uh, information. There's a lot of stuff in this API and what's cool about Streamlit, right, and APIs is that you can just make your own mashup of all this and the view to the world that's useful to you all in one place. So there you go, there's the uh, StockTwits dashboard. So the next dashboard we'll create is the Twitter dashboard. And so I installed a Tweepy or Tweepy. And so I'm gonna import that right here. I'm gonna get rid of all this stuff we we uh, wrote earlier just to clean this up. And so you see, this is just the small amount of code for the stock twits dashboard. And so let's fill out the uh, Twitter uh, dashboard, right? So I'm gonna select Twitter. Okay, Twitter dashboard logic. And let's just place what we need to access Twitter. So we have a uh, tweet pie. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna create a config.py. And so this does have a prerequisite if you wanna do this part, you actually need to sign up at developer.twitter.com and submit an application so that you get this uh, API key. And so they'll give you like an API key and an API secret. And I'm gonna put that in my uh, config.py. And so to do this part, uh, I'm gonna do a Twitter consumer key in my config.py and I'm gonna set that equal to a value, twitter.consumer secret. And they'll give you all these values and you just plug them in. And it takes a little bit for them to approve it. So this isn't instant, but uh, it's still interesting. So follow along if you don't have this already and you can build it later in the future should you wish to. So I got Twitter access token and Twitter access token secret. And I'm going to put this information uh, in the config file, like my personal one. I'm not gonna show that on the camera. And the other thing I'll do is put some popular uh, Twitter traders in here. So some usernames. And these are the people we're gonna scan for ideas. So Trader Stewie is a super popular, a couple hundred thousand uh, followers. We got the Chart Life, okay, that's Ian McMillan. He posts a lot of these base breakout uh, setups, uh, Canuck to USA, posts a lot of charts. And I got uh, Sunrise Trader, Trader, and uh, TML Trader, okay. And so I'm just defining a constant list uh, of usernames. And what we're gonna do is request all the tweets of these particular users that we're interested in and find the ones that have cache tags in them and then show a chart for, for each of their tweets. And then they'll just give us a quick way to look at all the ideas that are getting posted uh, on Twitter. So I'm gonna go to the documentation for a Tweepy here, tweepy.org. I'm gonna go to read the docs and they have a little hello world type example and we'll just start with this. And so I'm gonna copy this. So we already imported uh, Tweepy and let's go ahead and initialize uh, the API. And so I'll just put this at the top here. Okay, so I got tweepy.oauth handler. And you remember we just created that config file. Okay, and then my config file has my config dot Twitter consumer key and my config dot Twitter consumer secret. And then they have this access token. So I'll just substitute in mine, a Twitter access token and config dot Twitter access token secrets. So now that we have this uh, API instance here, we can call uh, methods of Tweepy to get information. So we have like API dot home timeline. Uh, there's one for a user's timeline. You can get a user. Um, so there's all these different methods that you can call. And so what I want to do is get a user's timeline. So for each user that I listed, each of those traders, I just wanna get their timeline and so I can just pass it their username and it should get me uh, their tweets, okay? So I have API here and so what I wanna do is under if option equals Twitter, 
I'll do api.usertimeline, and let's just see if this works, Trader Stewie. So we'll hard code it in at first, and I'll do tweets equals api.usertimeline, uh, Trader Stewie, and I'll do st.write tweets. Okay, and let's see what that looks like. Okay, and so you see now I already have a list of these status objects. So we wanna unpack that a little bit. So if I do a uh, for tweet in tweets, st.write tweet, it'll print each one individually. And when it refreshes, you can kind of see the structure of one of these tweet objects. So I'm interested in the uh, text, right? So I'll do a tweet dot text. There you go, so that's just the text. And you can see some of these uh, mention uh, stocks. So these cash tags here, $DPW and $FTFT. And so let's only, Tr Trader Stewie often posts a lot of uh, pictures of food and, and you know beer and things that he's doing. So if we're just interested in uh, the stocks he's posting, let's just parse the ones that have these dollar signs in them. So what I'll do now is say, if a dollar is in tweet.txt, then we'll go forward. So I'm only interested in tweets that have a dollar sign in them. And then I'm gonna split uh, the text. So I'm gonna say words equals a tweet.text.split. And I'm gonna split on the spaces so that we have a list of all of the words. And then I'm gonna go through each of the words. So I'll say if for word in words, if word dot starts with a dollar sign, right? If there's any words that start with a dollar sign and a word, the rest of the word is alphanumeric. So I'm gonna say is alpha because they might just say dollar seven ninety nine. That's just a price. We want uh, things that start with a dollar sign and end in a few characters, alphanumeric characters. That way, uh, it's more likely to be a stock symbol. Okay, and I'll do uh, symbol equals word, and then the symbol is the rest of the word. So. If the word is dollar DPW, the symbol is from the first character to the end, and we're gonna leave off the dollar sign. So I'm gonna do word one colon, and let's just write the symbol, okay? So these are just the symbols in his tweets. And so what we'll go ahead and do is also, you know, write the tweet text in this case. So I'll write uh, tweet.text. And let's also show, let's show the charts of these as well in line so that we can view them very easily. And so what we can do is get the format for uh, FinViz, which uh, he often uses. And so one way to easily get a FinViz chart is you can put the symbol in a URL like that and use their site to get this image of a chart. So I'm gonna put this format in here. So the way to do this, if you go to FinViz, uh, you can look up a chart and I'm using the charts here. And there's a special URL, URL format that you can use to get an image of this. And I've done this in previous videos. So I'm gonna take this format to get the raw image and I'm gonna do st.image. And then instead of doing apple there, I'm just gonna substitute in the symbol. So I'll make this an F string. And then I'm gonna put the symbol just like that. And if I do that, you'll see that now I have a Trader Stewie's tweets that mention stocks and just a list of uh, stocks he mentions and along with the chart there. So you can see him talking about Neo, Bingo, uh, apps, turbine, I think, digital turbine, DPW and FTFT. And maybe you wanna look at them, maybe not. Okay, so that's a list. And then if you wanna like show his avatar, I believe this also has a way to get their avatar. So uh, so we can do a user equals um, api.getUser, uh, Trader Stewie. So we can do st.image and it's user dot profile image URL. And I already looked that up. And if you don't know that, you know, there's no reason you're gonna know that. It's, it's in the Tweepy documentation and I took notes on this earlier. So if you do get user, uh, this is a way to get the user and you can print that out and see all of the uh, information that you have available. And you can see that I was able to get his, uh, yeah, there's his avatar there. And then I can also just print his username. And so now instead of just doing Trader Stewie, let's just loop through all of those, all of the usernames we had in our config file. So we'll do uh, for user in uh, config dot uh, Twitter usernames. And we'll do for username in Twitter usernames, okay? 
and then we'll indent this out and we'll do user equals API get user. And since we have username in this loop, I'll get username and get user timeline of username. So we're making this dynamic now. And then we're getting each of their profile uh, images, uh, the tweets for each one of those users, and then looping through all the tweets and displaying all the charts. And if I do this now, you'll see we have Trader Stewie there. We have Ian McMillan there uh, posting crypto charts. Uh, we have materials, um, a lot of energy names showing up. And who else do we got? Jets, which is a airline recovery play. Uh, Baidu looks like it's taking off. And so, yeah, so we have all these traders' timelines. And yeah, you see someone highlighted uh, Twitter right there. And so you kind of see, and the intro of the video, if you recognize, is a reference to one of the last videos we did on ARK Invest where we pointed out uh, Kathy and ARK Invest buying Twitter right here. And you can see, you know, Twitter's had a nice day since then. So hope you got in on that. Um, yeah, and Peloton, uh, Cloudflare. So people are talking about lots of stocks. And yeah, easy way to access uh, Twitter data. And let me go ahead and write the username to, other, and not just the avatar. So I'll do um, st.image. I'll do uh, st.write username. Actually, I'll do header. There you go, Trader Stewie. And I'll do subheader. There you go, so I have the username and then you see the chart life is here and so forth. So now uh, we have two things. We have our stock twits uh, dashboard that lets us see mentions for a particular stock, right? And then we have our Twitter dashboard that lets us uh, just show a list of users we're interested in, in and charts of all the symbols they're talking about. So next, let's go ahead and access the Wall Street Bets uh, database that we had created previously. And this should be very straightforward. We already have the queries. And so I'm gonna go through this real quick, uh, just so you, since you already know the concept uh, of Streamlit here. So I'm gonna do if option equals Wall Street Bets. And then I'm gonna say uh, st dot subheader uh, Wall Street Bets. And then I'll do if option equal, equal uh, pattern. We'll do st.subheader uh, pattern. Okay. Invalid syntax. I uh, forgot a colon. Okay. Wall Street bets. Good. And chart and pattern. And let's let's fill in all of these dashboards. And so what I'm going to do here for the uh, Wall Street bets version is this is going to be database driven. And we've already created a database connection in a previous tutorial. And so what I'm going to do here is at the top, initialize a connection to our database. So I'm going to make sure we import, import psycho PG2. I'm going to create a new database connection and I'm going to pass it the host database username and password. And I'm going to put these values in my config file. I'm going to create a cursor. Okay. So I already have these and these are the same as the previous tutorial. I have a local uh, database running at my local host 127.0.0.1 and just a database user of Postgres and password password and I have that ETF database we've already created. So I'm establishing a database connection and a cursor and at that point I can just run SQL. So if I go to Wall Street Bets here, I can do cursor.execute uh, select and let's just select some real quick. So I'll do select star from mention uh, and then I'll just do limit 10 and I'll do rows equals kircher dot fetch all. Okay. And I'll do uh, st dot write rows. Okay. So I'm fetching data from a database. Okay. Config has no value DB host. So let me save that. Okay. And then I also need to import uh, psycho PG two dot extras. Okay. There we go. Okay. And I want it to default on wall street bets. And so since that's uh, this version, since I'm working on this code right now, when I reload the page, I might want it to default on a particular uh, dashboard. So what I can do here is as a parameter here, which dashboard I put the options. And then since this is the zeroth item in the tuple, and this is the first item, I can do a one there, right? And now when I refresh it, you see how it starts on the second, the first indexed one. And now if I change it, Right, and I reload the page, it'll default to stock twits. 
So I want it to default to Wall Street Bets for now, just so I can get this done. So you see how I fetched from the database, right? And I already have these mentions populated, and this is just 10 uh, records from our mention uh, table, and these are cash tags that people are talking about uh, on Wall Street Bets. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and copy some queries I've already created, just to make this quick. So, so what I'm doing here is I'm using my database cursor and I'm running this query that's gonna count the number of mentions. It's gonna fetch the symbol. Um, and then it's only gonna find the mentions uh, from the last 14 days. And we're gonna group by the stock ID. And we're only gonna show uh, stocks that were mentioned more than 10 times in the last 14 days. And we're gonna sort by number of mentions. I'm gonna write those to the screen. And I'm also going to just write out 100 uh, mentions on the screen. And I'm gonna write out the uh, date, time, symbol, message, the URL, and the username, and write those to the screen. And if I do that, you'll see I have a list here, and you can see GameStop, people kept talking about that. Uh, SNDL, Sundial, that was like a weed stock, AMC, Tilray, and so forth for the last 14 days. And you can see uh, one comparison you'll notice, we talked about ARK Invest, and we talked about mentions on Wall Street bets over time. And what you'll notice is a lot of these stocks were just very quick uh, pump and dump, right? So you saw when I talked about silver, uh, silver spiked 20% on Monday and then immediately sold off. The weed stocks, one day they popped like all 30%, like Tilray and Sundial, or 100%. They all immediately sold off. Like GameStop, you saw what happened uh, and so forth. So a lot of these meme stocks aren't very sustainable. But also, you know, if you got in on early on these mentions, then might have worked out for you. Whereas the Kathy Wood stocks, uh, they were a little more sustainable, like Twitter, you know, just grew slowly over time. And, you know, they're larger companies and have some fundamental reasons behind uh, buying them. So you can look through this list and maybe you'll find something of interest, right? And so I hard coded this for the last 14 days, but what if we want this to be dynamic? And so I mentioned uh, you can add a slider widget. And so, yeah, what if we wanna add a slider on the, the sidebar here to control the number of days? What I can do is go here, and if the option is Wall Street Bets, I'll erase that, and I'll just do uh, num days, number of days, equals st.sidebar, and there's a, a slider widget. And I'll just say the label is number of days, and I'll say, um, one, 30, and three, okay? And so this gives it a minimum and a maximum. And now if I look over here, and I'm gonna make this, so you see how I don't have the rerun on anymore, so I had to manually rerun it, but you can also set it to auto rerun. And so you see that one and 30 gives it a minimum and maximum, and the default here is three, okay? But this is not hooked up to my query, so instead of interval 14 days, what I'm gonna do is put a placeholder holder here. So I'll do percent %s, and I'm gonna pass this tuple here, num days, and this comma at the end is very important. So the number of days that you enter on the slide, sidebar in the slider is gonna go get plugged into this query by this list here, by this tuple, right? And so if I select five on the sidebar, a five is gonna go in here because of this variable. So if I do this, you'll see I can slide this over. So I can do the last 12 days, or I can go back to just one day, two day, right? And it'll dynamically adjust. So you can see Palantir was mentioned more frequently uh, recently, okay? And so you see how this slider is kind of cool. It's like dynamically controlling a query. And we could even like put this into a histogram as well, or show the mentions over time across different days if we want to. But I'm about to do a chart example, so I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on the visualization part. I just wanted to show the counts and uh, the Reddit posts here. So that's pretty cool. We already have three dashboards. We've used a select box. We've used a slider. We've used a text input to dynamically control three different dashboards with three different social media sources, including Wall Street Bets, uh, Twitter, and StockTwits, okay? And so now um, let's go ahead and switch from social media and let's talk about charts and patterns. And so uh, let's go ahead and do our little pattern recognition that we did before. Um, so if you'll remember in the uh, chart patterns video, uh, we created a few queries. So in this time scale DB AIO HTP, I've written just 
a laundry list of queries that we ran. And so I have this one for bullish engulfing pattern and this one for this three bar breakout. And so what we can do is copy these queries and run these queries against Postgres the same way. And I've already done this in advance just to make this quicker now, since we've already just uh, covered the uh, core concepts. So I'm going to copy this and explain what it does. So I'm going to go to uh, option equals pattern. So option equals pattern. And then I'll set that as the default one, zero, one, two, three, four. So let's work on the pattern dashboard. Okay. And then under pattern here, I'm going to put some code. <laughs> and you see, like, I have this gigantic query here. And so basically all I do is have a query for each pattern. So I wrote this one query to detect a bullish engulfing pattern. Review the previous video if you want to see how this works with the lag functions, right? And so I have a select box now that says which pattern, and you can choose engulfing or three bar pattern. If it's engulfing, it runs this query. And if it's a three bar, it runs uh, this query, okay? And then we just fetch the rows and use our pattern for displaying charts, so finviz and then the symbols that these queries find, we loop through and display charts that match those patterns. So if I save that, let's see if it works. Okay, so I'm gonna go to rerun. Okay, and so now you see we have patterns and you see on the engulfing here, um, I set this for Feb, I've already uh, populated this again, so I have this for February 18th, right? And so what I can do here, you can see for February 18th, which is the previous day is right here. This is February 19th. It's Friday night when I'm recording this. Uh, so this is February 18th. So you see the bullish engulfing pattern on DocuSign. And so, you know, that's looking pretty good to continue, even though DocuSign's ran quite a bit. Uh, looks like it's continuing on. You can see the bullish engulfing pattern on this Raven, R-A-V-N. What is that? Uh, Raven Industries. And so that one's been breaking out as well. So agriculture products, okay? And then UPS there, bullish engulfing pattern, doesn't look like it's gone anywhere, so we'll see how that works out. And then let's go to three bar pattern here, and you see that ATI stock here. So if I look at ATI stock, Allegheny Technologies, we can look at uh, Caterpillar, looks great, uh, Caterpillar. So big name makes the tractors and such you can see it's it's just been on fire um, and then EMN HubSpot yeah look at HubSpot yeah so that's that's really been going crazy uh, Teladoc has been a good one and then this EMN um, and I can put a more dynamic chart to see uh, a, a longer time frame but you can see, yeah, this is about to go to all-time highs again. So, you know, there's something going on here with Eastman Chemical Company, Kodak, which we which came up in the uh, previous one of the previous videos actually, as an as an arc holding for some reason. Okay, so yeah, these might be worth looking at as uh, stocks that had a. Uh, I think that I think our uh, definition was that they sold off slightly on lower volume and then had a huge candle after that three bar sell off. So you see all of them kind of have this little uh, pattern here where there's a few days of decline and then a huge wake up bar, right? So those might be worth looking at. Teladoc's been one of the uh, best stocks for the last couple of years. Um, yeah, so there you go. There's a pattern detection right there that shows you a bunch of charts. And so for our final dashboard, let's go ahead and get a, a chart going and so i'm going to display this chart dashboard and so i'm going to do zero one two three let's select the chart one by default and so if the option is chart let's play some more code and i'm gonna do another paste just because i'm running out of time uh so i just want to go through this so you don't have to watch me type it all so i'm gonna do that and you see what i'm doing here let me rerun this and I need to import uh, the Plotly graph objects. So I'm going to uh, import uh, plotly.graph objects as GO. Okay, let's see. Let's rerun. Let's see if this works. There you go. Okay, so that worked. And so let, let's talk about what this is doing. So I'm going to go back down to chart. And you see, I'm putting a text input, right? 
So we displayed a text input and we can type in a symbol name. So NVDA or Apple or Microsoft or Twitter, right? You can look at the chart and what that's doing here is whatever value I type in the text box is getting assigned a symbol. And I'm using pandas read SQL. So uh, pandas has a feature where you can execute an SQL query. So I'm just running an SQL query to uh, fetch data from my daily bars. And this read SQL uh, function I covered in the full stack tutorial um, when I did the back testing. So we back tested that opening range breakout and I used write read SQL to get data uh, from my SQL database and then read it into a pandas data frame. So it takes a query, um, a database connection and whatever parameters you need. So you run the SQL query and returns the results as a pandas data frame. And in the backtesting video, I use this pandas data frame in conjunction with backtrader to backtest a trading strategy. Here, I'm just reading the data, the price data into a data frame. And then once I have the price data in a data frame, it's very easy to use a plotly. So just a uh, the uh, candlestick uh, charting functionality that's part of plotly. So if you go to plotly uh, candlestick chart, okay. Um, they, they already have these graph objects to create a candlestick chart, right? So you can import and you do go figure and then you could do data equals go dot candlestick and you just give it a date, open, high, low and close and it'll render, render this uh, candlestick chart for you. And I'm not going through all this again because um, I've already made entire videos on candlestick charts on using pandas read SQL. And someone was saying like, you keep referring to these other videos and I have to watch all the videos just to uh, get uh, to understand this project. And yeah, that's that's true. Uh, since I've been making these videos over 100 videos over the course of a year, I don't want to keep uh, explaining the same concepts because some people have been following this channel for a year. And, um, you know, they'll get bored if I just start from first principles over and over again. I used to do that. But now I'm just kind of assuming you have some knowledge of things I've already talked about. So I'm using uh, the candlestick chart here giving it the open, high, low, and close from my data frame that I read in from SQL. And then I'm setting this type equals category because that will exclude uh, weekends since I have no price data on weekends. And you can experiment with the layout if you want like a different height. And so you do a uh, streamlet, so st.plotly chart, and you give it the figure, and then you just write that to, uh, write that to the web page. So you see how I made that tall. I don't want that that tall, so I'll do 500, right, and adjust it down, 700, right. So find the right size, experiment with the layouts. Uh, this is just a basic chart. Um, it's okay. Um, so you can pan, pan and zoom. So basic functionality for charting in here, but you can make more and more sophisticated charts if you'd like. And you see how I was able to just dump out this data frame. So I read from my database uh, using an SQL query, read all of that data into a data frame and just dumped it on the screen. And then I can type in the name of any symbol. So uh, Palantir, I type that in there and you see we have the chart of Palantir dynamically rendered in our dashboard along with the price data that we can do whatever we want with. So yeah, look at that. Just like that little whirlwind tour there. Uh, that's how you use Streamlit. And you see how I didn't even need to really dive into the documentation that much. It seems very uh, straightforward, right? We just do st dot whatever type of widget or thing we want to render. So we can write to the screen, we can put an image on the screen, we can put a select box, a text input, and then we just uh, store the results of whatever the user does, like whatever the user selects on the slider or in the text box, we store it in a variable. And then we can just run conditionals on that variable and render different parts of this document or query different data, depending on what the user does. And we have a nice dashboard that looks pretty good. Um, and you know, you might be saying, what's the downsides to this? The downsides I see is there's some complex uh, user experiences that I wanted to do that it seemed a little bit more tricky. Like I wanted to show the avatars for all the users on the sidebar and have you click the image, have clickable images where I click Trader Stewie and it just shows his tweets or have a fade effect and do all these effects or um, have clickable grids and image galleries. There's certain things like if there's not an out of the box component, then it might be tricky to do and you'll have to drop down. I think you can actually add React components to this thing, um, but it's more, 
if, if you really want to do exactly what you want and it's not built into the framework, you're kind of limited. And then also, it's not really a full-on web application. You'll notice when I change and click around, this URL doesn't change. So if you want this really, truly uh, multi-page web application experience with logging in and out um, and, um, and uh, changing routes, um, and all that, then you might need something more sophisticated. But if you just want to have some data frames, some data, SQL database, CSV, you want to display some quick chart widgets and uh, provide users or other people that you collaborate with uh, an easy user interface for uh, controlling that data, Streamlit, pretty good way to go. Uh, very simple, and I think I think we learned a lot and made some useful applications in just a short amount of time. So uh, thanks a lot for watching this video, and stay tuned. I got a lot more coming out soon. Uh, take care.